Today we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. My idea for this show was to invite guests and get the conversation started, to take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. And we encourage our listeners to look within themselves to take decisive action to make a positive difference. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. I'm your host, Bill Myers. And today we are discussing spiritual wellness in today's world with Dr. Linda Salvin. Um, I want to uh, set this up a little bit. So how to achieve and maintain spiritual wellness in today's world of turbulence and change. Uh, that's what we're going to discuss today with Dr. Linda Salvin. Dr. Linda Salvin received her Bachelor of Arts degree in health education from San Francisco State University in 1975. She earned her master's degree in public health in epidemiology from the University of Michigan in 1977. Dr. Linda was ordained as a Doctor of Divinity in 1999 and was awarded her PhD in metaphysics from the American Institute of Holistic Theology in 2008. As a standing member of the American Federation of Certified Psychics and Mediums, Dr. Linda Salvin serves uh, as their chief examiner of metaphysics and has been voted in the top 10 of best psychics in the world for over seven years. She is a member of the American Association of Drugless Practitioners and is board certified by the American Alternative Medical Association. Dr. Linda fuses her medical background and spiritual gifts as a metaphysical clinician, helping people like you with a, with a unique approach that draws on both science and spirit, the physical and the esoteric. Please help me welcome my special guest today, Dr. Linda. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Bill. Thank you. What a, it sounds so impressive. It's like I forgot I did all that, but thank you. It's nice to be here. <laughs> it's great having you here. It's great having you here. So, uh, you know, uh, the first thing I think that would be uh, a good place for us to start today would be to take a look backwards because um, you have had some experiences, uh, some, <laughs> some significant experiences in your life that I'm sure were the, the, um, uh, brought you to a point of your own spiritual enlightenment and awareness. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. So I would like to start there because I think that's a logical place for us to start before we move forward. <laughs> yeah, it's all the story. I'll put it as quickly as I can for you, for your audience. I, uh, yes, you as you stated, I received my master's in uh, epidemiology, the big word today, um, okay. in 1977 from the University of Michigan, came back to Los Angeles, where I'm a native, and four years after grad school, I was on company business with an insurance company, and we flew to Northern California to, uh, I was an environmental health specialist, so we went to a hospital, which was one of our clients, and we had to test the ethylene oxide levels coming out of this autoclave where they um, sterilize equipment for the doctors and surgery. And we warned all the staff and the doctors, please do not touch this for four hours because it would disable the, the, the test results. Of course, somebody opened at the two hour mark. So my partner got angry. So let's just go. We packed up, got to the airport, San Jose airport. And you know, like if you're sitting across from me and we're having coffee and dessert and right over there is the hangar and you're watching the plane just sit there before we board. So I took a look and I said to my partner, doesn't it look like it's going to crack there? Because Bill, I saw a fuelage or an exhaust settlement line just beyond the wing sitting in the, whatever it is, the, not the hangar, whatever they call it. And um, he said, Linda, you're just tired. I don't see anything. Well, an hour and a half later, we crash landed the plane, Boeing 737 with 109 people. Um, the landing gear was stripped and the engine fell off and the plane cracked in half exactly in the space I saw it. So yeah. that was my first real premonition. I have probably had them throughout life, but um, nothing like that. And um, cut to the chase when I slid down the uh, ramp, the emergency ramp, I had this out-of-body experience and this wish, wish energy took over. And I heard a voice I'd never heard in my life. And at that time I was 27, it's 40 years later doing this show. But um, I literally 
God is my witness. I was 40 feet out of my body for four months. I stand five feet eight, but I was split with this thing, like, like a cyclops. I'd see life out of two sides. And yeah. it, it was really weird. And then it took a long time to recuperate from that. And then a year later, I was on my way to UCLA for a job interview and I got hit by a fire truck and had another out of body experience. And then um, when the captain got out of the out of the truck and I was crying and laughing and my car was smashed and my body was all over the my energy, he said, Are you okay, ma'am? I said, Oh yeah, sure. Last year I was in a plane crash and I'm getting hit by a fire truck. I made a joke, but I went in, I became agoraphobic, I became more psychic, I became more aware. I mean, it was weird. Then two years after that, I totaled a car here in LA on a rainy night. And as I spun out. I broadsided a Pinto in the uh, intersection and uh, there were no lights. So we both went through, but as I was spinning, this voice said, you can come with us now or stay and do. And I was given a message and I held on to the wheel. I was driving a Camaro in 84 and this white light went from the ceiling of my head into the heavens. And I saw things. They gave me the message. I said, no. And next thing I know, there's a paramedic, uh, using the jaws of life to get me out of the car. I go on the street and I said, they want me off the planet. They want me off the planet. <laughs> and they took me to UCLA and I spent the night and called friends. They said, another accident, Linda. It just kept happening. It's like it, they, God, spirit, something chose me to take me from this direction and move me. But I had no idea what I was going through because there was no one to talk to. There was no internet back then. Right, so, right. You know, it was a whole different world, but I eventually tripped enough and tried to figure it out and come through some fears. And one day I just said, there's got to be a reason. There's got to be a God. There's got to be a reason for this. And I just said, what do you want me to do? Radio opened up, TV opened up. I had my own show for 20 years before the internet. I mean, just life changed when I started following the spirit. Had no idea what it was. Wow. That was part of it. <laughs> That's yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Scary. Very frightening. Very uh, soul exchanging, soul searching. Um, the depth of feelings versus the heights of my frequency. There's maybe a handful of people that I associate with that are a couple of doctors and a couple of psychics that really get the height that I go to because I've seen the other side I you know when you're a kid or even as an adult you go to the the pier and you got the the the, the bumper cars right 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 and all the attached with an electronic cable and they move around that's what I used to say I feel like I'm being led by the other side right mm -hmm. and then I had emergency surgery became a healer and that was in 1991 and then in 1996 I had a hundred tumors removed from my hips and thighs. I started becoming a medium and I channeled the other side for 22 years. I will not do it anymore. I quit. I retired in, in 2018. I will not channel dead people anymore. I am away from the paranormal. So I went very clinical again, which is where you're introducing me as the metaphysical clinician. Actually a, a psychiatrist that I know gave me that title because he helped me merge epidemiology, the woo woo, <laughs> with the PhD, which you and I talk about because you're in metaphysics. Right, right. You no, know? so somehow I had to I had to embrace it. And just two months ago I was awarded a, a international award from one of the top leaders in the healthcare industry. Wow. We got, yes, yeah, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, I congratulations. Have, I mean, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um and, and it's wonderful to be acknowledged. I mean, particularly from the scientific that's, side, because a lot right. of them most of us aren't you work so hard and all oh, great show oh that's nice yeah i learned okay and at the end of the day nobody cares nobody cares but right. somebody nominated me for this thing that came out of india and dubai and i filled out the form i passed the exams and i got one of 100 awards i'm like okay it paid off something said you did a good job yeah that's wonderful that's wonderful well, you know, I think it's very interesting because uh, your uh, these experiences that you you named of um, a lot of them are seated in the in the 80s. And uh, that was yeah. around the time of my losing my mind um, and not understanding what was going on. How uh, old were you then? 
I was 18 years old. All right. So I'm like nine years ahead of you. And we were going, maybe it was the timing of that decade or like what we're going through now with, with COVID. There's always something. Sure. But it's interesting that you were waking up or being tapped or called or led at the same time I was going through that. You were just out of high school. You know, we're all in our journey. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it was it was it was pretty frightening. And I wasn't sure I was going to survive that period because I was I was in a different reality. <laughs> uh, we all are. We're, yeah. Yeah. And it, and, and it was it was pretty scary. And I think the thing that um, the thing that saved me, quite frankly, was it was around that same time, um, you know, months of n- I'm not even being able to speak with others about my no you're by yourself nobody put words to it you know no nobody understands until you find your like your village your group you're you gotta go in and out of all these people you think they're your friends or your boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever and then all of a sudden they don't get you and they close the door and then you're lonely then you're scared then you're overwhelmed then all of a sudden you're at peace and then you think well there must be a reason and you start searching and then like you you ended up in metaphysics i was drawn to the degree long after I got my 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 at my master's because with all the work I did on radio and all the adulation I got from being a psychic, there had to be something like with you to merge the woo woo with the academic or cognitive, whatever you want to call it. And that's what I did. I proved both worlds. Yes, indeed. And so did you. So did you. Yes. And, and, and the thing that saved me, quite frankly, was was uh, was Shirley MacLaine coming out with her stuff. And then all of a sudden I was reading Shirley MacLaine's books and I went, wow. Yeah, she was one of the leaders. It. Yes. <laughs> when I was in the plane crash, Bill, a friend of mine at the time, 1981, it must have been March of 81, She said, you got to go see this psychic. I had been to one psychic in my life. I didn't believe in them, except this one lady. I thought my friend told her everything about me because she knew so much. (laughs) But I walked into this woman's home here in the uh, LA area. Her back was to me. She didn't even say anything. She goes, oh, you're a walk-in. I said, what's a walk-in? She goes, it's somebody who's close to death and their soul exchanges for uh, something else. She goes, come sit down. And she said, whoever entered you is a psychic. I said, I'm not psychic. Well... That was 81. Okay, here we are 40 years later. And I'm like, known around the world as a psychic. But she gave me the book by Ruth Montgomery. I don't know if you've read it. I talk about it on every show because she gave it to me. And it started me to go on the journey. It's called um, Strangers Among Us by Ruth Montgomery. It was from the 70s. Yes. And she would talk about the soul exchange, which I knew something had happened that day. But I had no one to talk to. Even the therapist I was seeing, I said, I think God put me on that plane. He goes, God, what does God have to do with it? And I'm like, you know, you go. and I, yeah, <laughs> we, wake, we wake up, we see the big picture. The spiritual side of life besides mental, emotional, physical is so different. And let me say something, which I think your audience and probably you will benefit from. Here I have a bachelor's in health, a master's in health, a PhD in, the, in spiritual health because metaphysics is spirituality combined with psychology. Sure it is. Well, the definition of health from the uh, Department of Health Education and Welfare government says that the definition of health is is the state of mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being and not merely the absence of disease. So as all this was happening and I was searching and not understanding, I thought there's got to be something I'm missing. So when I became more spiritual, I remembered that definition from undergrad and I started putting it all together as the whole person. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's really wonderful. It's interesting. You, you, you mentioned Ruth Montgomery. I mean, this is, these are, these are things I, I, I found myself not able to be completely satisfied with way too many questions with regards to the the you know the Christian church and so on and so forth. Particularly early, I, I pretty much fled because I did not. There were there were parts of it that that I was okay with, and there was a lot of parts I was like, ah. Oh, but you're I don't normal know. because religion is man-made. I'm yeah. Jewish, but I had a Christ awakening after the plane crash. I had a cross fly out of the closet and hit me in the forehead, and I said, oh my God, I'm a Jew for Jesus. 
I had all these weird things. <laughs> then I went to Thailand and I saw the monks. So I thought, well, it's not just Jesus. And it's not just Moses. And it's not just this. It's everybody has a way of believing, but the brainwashing and the negativity and the fear versus a butterfly, the stars, people, just life, that's right. spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is. Absolutely. It is. And my, and my mother, she was, she was very instrumental in my spiritual development because, uh, you know, she knew of my discontent and my discomfort, um, early on. And so she, uh, was astute enough to turn me on to people such as Ruth Montgomery. And I'm lucky. you're very lucky. Yeah. And so she, she was, she was able to say, Hey, why don't you read this Billy and let me know what you, what you think. And we would have really wonderful conversations um, exploring again, sort of the spiritual realm and, and that sort of thing. And, and, uh, and then You're I very lucky. A lot of my beliefs. family, my family thought I was nuts. They didn't want to talk to me. My first big break was a psychic friends network in 1992. I was in the infomercial with Dionne Warwick and my sister called me names. I, I don't want to repeat on the air, but you know, because it was new, but I knew it was my calling. I didn't understand it. Right. Um, but I'll never be understood by my family. It's just a different spiritual realm. You're lucky you come from that. So you had a different light on your path. But um, the average person who's still feeling, searching, questioning, I call it lower ethereal. It's a very different level of comprehension. So when people come to me for private consultations, Sometimes I've got to work three times as hard and I'll even snap at them because it's so painful and work to break through their wall or their conditioning or their block or judgment, whatever it is, as opposed to some people call and it's like I've known them forever and I just babble and get to the source. Yeah. And people come from all different places, different levels of sure. growth, you know, but there's a lot of people 25 years ago and even today always looking for the light what's the answer what's my purpose why am i with this person where am i supposed to work what am i supposed to do will i ever find love everybody has the same questions through time why are we here and the purpose for human life i think is to love it's the humans that screw it all up yeah technology big farm politics we're just here to have a good time like your producer said we're here to love each other regardless of race creed religion it's all labels mm -hmm. if we cut open our wrist and you cut yours we're both gonna have red blood bill correct that is correct. you know you're in a different part of the country you're not jewish you're not Caucasian, but you and I are the same. 99% of us are the same. There's a 1% DNA change. Yeah. It's people. And look what's going on out there now. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to get we're going to get into some of that here in just a second. But I do appreciate you being here, Dr. Linda, and 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 shedding some light. Uh, oh, we need it. <laughs> we do. We do. So thank you so much for being here. And we're going to take our break right now. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires right here on the Inspired Choices Network, and we're discussing spiritual wellness with Dr. Linda. We'll be right back. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires, as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. Are you a subject matter expert? 
Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We are back, and you are here with us on Bill Myers Inspires, and today we are discussing spiritual wellness in today's world with Dr. Linda. Dr. Linda, in today's world, we were sort of leading into uh, 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 the the the, the, the traumas of the day, yeah. <laughs> of, of which there are many, there are many, and 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 many of them I I, I articulate in the course of um, in the course of the um, even the intro of the show when I'm talking about you know the political division, the, the racial divide, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, but the and, most important part. Let me let me interrupt you. Was that you playing piano? Was that your composition? Well, it was my composition, but it was not me playing the piano. I was actually <laughs> playing the bass. But, uh, but oh, okay. But I knew you were. That's one of your songs. I know that's one of your melodies. So, there you go. Yeah, I heard it. Good for you. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you. I will take a bow now. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you've been the first one who who has called me out on the music and and been able to to share that with me, and that's why you're one of the best psychics in the world. So, thank you so much for that. So. So again, we have so many issues that we're, we're dealing with, wrestling with, not just in America, this pandemic thing. I was just looking at news reports that the numbers are shooting up pretty significant, I think over 100,000. Yeah, but we don't know. Um, it, 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 I'm with, I straddle the science, the epidemiologist, the immunologist, the cardiologist. I have a whole network of the doctors and the mm-hmm. professionals and the cognitive, and then there's the other side who are the chiropractors, the healers, the people that follow Del Big Tree or Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And that whole movement of, it's not really anti-vax, it's just, is it a vax? And I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to get um, censored. I've been censored already on a few shows, so I'm not going to go there. There's questions on both sides. There's lies on both sides. There's conspiracy on both sides. I don't know if we will ever know the truth, I don't know. Um, You have heard the same conspiracies, questions that I have. We know certain people are in control. It might be population control. It might be dangerous. It might kill you. It might not. I know a lot of people who have been injured or died, as have you. And I know a lot of, um, well, we know what happened last year with the BLM. We know what happened. We know that anti-Semitism is on the rise again. And all my mom's, my grandmother's family were all killed in the camps. I mean, it's like history's repeating itself. And you would think, going back to when you were 18 and I was 27, and go back to when you were eight and I was 17, okay? Because back then in the 60s with Martin Luther King, Versus where we are now, how much have we really changed and grown? We all have a dream. We all want to see it peaceful. We get moments, and then it blows up again. But as a psychic, and what I've learned, Earth, the planet, is a warrior planet. We're always looking for peace. This planet will never have peace. It's not meant to be peace. And this may sound weird. You may have heard it before, but when I was healing from the plane crash in 81 and all these weird things were happening to me, I took a look at the planet. So I used to write songs. I put it all into lyric and I started to think this is the hell we come back time and time again to get it right individually and at a societal level and at a global level. 
So I'm wondering if this is that, which is why most of us have a struggle on a daily basis of something. Mm -hmm. If it's not the computer, it's your phone. If it's not your phone, it's the mail. If it's not the mail, it's your mom. If it's not your mom, it's your producer. If it's not the producer, it's the people at Macy's. There's always something. Rarely do we just get up, have a great day without having to network and fix and deal with something, right? You just, right. most of the time, you just don't have a great day. You make it as best you can, but there's always a conflict. There's always an obstacle. There's always something, even on vacation. <laughs> you know? Right, right. You <laughs> the know, room's the not ready. Activities that they're in is, I'm going on vacation to relax. Yeah. And it's like, and you come oh back, God. you need another vacation, right? right. It's always <laughs> the food's not right, the room's not right, the toilet's broken, the sheets are dirty. It's always something. <laughs> but that um, is that is true. You know, but but I think that I think that <laughs> all, all of that is 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 valid. And and I and so I do think and and this this goes back to you know uh, 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 you know Buddha. I mean the the idea that life is suffering, and so. Um, I, th I think that that is really key, but in the midst of all of this, what we're here to discuss today is the idea of spiritual wellness. So in the midst of all of these challenges that, that you've just named and, and, and we agree are- You find the peace, you find the peace, you find the acceptance, and you learn how to navigate without the fight. I can be hot-headed and I can be, I can snap in a second. If it's not right, I'm like, yeah. And then there's moments it's like, okay, just stay in the moment. And this is another issue. It's like, okay, deal with it. Don't yell, don't hang up or just ask questions. And it works its way through each and every time. It very rarely fails. We always get to the other side. It's how we handle getting there, right? Well, you know, one of one of the epiphanies that that I that I came across when I was doing, you know, a public speaking thing, and I, I just it, something hit me very strongly right before I was hitting the stage to to deliver a speech on, I, I don't know, it, it may have been forgiveness, I think may have been the topic, but anyway, when I right before I stepped out, this thing hit me so strong, and then I said, okay, that's what I'm going to open with, and so I I hit the stage and you know, abandoned script right away. And everybody's like, you know, what the heck's he doing? And I said, you know, every one of us have these, these obstacles in our lives that we go, man, I'm never going to get through this. I, there's no way I'm going to make it through this thing. And I said, how many of you have experienced that? All the hands go up. And then I said, you know something, here's the good news. All of those experiences, you did make it through, and every one of them is in the rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. and, and here we are again with a new set of experiences to tackle, right? Exactly, exactly. We've got more dragons to slay, you know. And so I think that, uh, but 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 I really am curious about what types of things that we can offer to the audience, because certainly all we're doing at this particular point is sort of affirming. The, the, the okay, so when, when, when people call me for private consultation or when I was on radio for 20 years or when I lectured like you did, I've been out there, did, been, been there, done that, and I'm going back on the air with my own station. It's been a while, but um, there's a few things I teach people to remember what God really is, and it's not religious. It's not the man on the cross, and it's not the Buddha out in the middle of somewhere in Thailand, and it's not Moses coming down with the Ten Commandments. But the Ten Commandments make sense, but that's, he wasn't the God. He was the Son giving a message. You take away all the religious stuff and, and eat fish, don't eat fish, have sex, don't have sex, get a divorce, don't get a divorce. I mean, all the rules kept changing with the new religion, right? So um, – <laughs> The bottom line is God, good orderly direction, or somebody called it Gus, guy upstairs. Um, the, I'll say, is it odd or is it God? A coincidence is God acting anonymously. Einstein said that years ago. So you're driving, it's Christmas, you're going to the mall, and you know you're not going to get a parking place, and there it is right in front of the store's door for you. Right, Bill? Right, I right. usually say, thank you, God, or I'll say, thanks, Mom, because my mom always had parking spaces. But something out there in the middle of, traffic gave it to me so i acknowledge the universe so people say well i can't sleep and i can't find god and blah, blah. so my little ritual for the lap my mom died 12 and a half years ago so every night if i'm restless and my mind's going before i go to sleep 
and I'm not drinking the tea and I'm not meditating because that doesn't work for me. You know, I'll just say, good night, God. Good night, mom. Next thing I know it's morning. If you acknowledge your place on earth as a pebble of sand, one grain that you have a God, whatever that is, it doesn't have to be big. It's just find that feeling or that connection or go hug a tree and connect with the universe. Um, I will tell people that if you just say in the morning, good morning, God, you don't have to be on your hands and knees and wishing all the best for your relatives and the poor people. It's just like, hey, let's have a good day. You turn it over, surrender. It's not your time to control everything. Uh-huh. And the more, the more we let go of control and the more we surrender. I was taught years ago, the more I depend on God, the less de- in the, more, the more I depend on God, the more independent I become. And I never understood that. But the more I watched the universe work, I became stronger and integrated from the conflicts of the mind, body, spirit fragments when I was going through all the changes. And init- I call it an initiation because basically I was being initiated by the other side. Why me? I have no idea. I was going to be Joni Mitchell. Are <laughs> you talking about music? I played guitar. So um, the, the, the opening of light. I help people come out of like the manhole cover and give them a ladder or a bucket to climb out of this depression and the darkness. Can I just recite the poem I was telling you about the butterfly, which is how I have taught people for 25 years. Sure, sure. You can recite it. And then we'll, we'll go to a break right after that. And then we'll I think this it. will help people understand how I have learned to see God. Okay. And it's, it's just paraphrasing. It's a Sanskrit poem from the 1200s. And it says, God, are you real? It's on my website. It's on the front page. It's in an infomercial with Chris Jenner. It's all over. And the kid's looking for God. What's God? Where are you? Show me. So he says, God, are you real? And a metal lark sang, but the child did not hear. So the child said, God, are you real? And the thunder rolled across the sky, but the child did not listen. So the child said, God, are you real? And this, um, a child was born, but the child did not know. So the child said, touch me, God. Show me you're real. Whereupon God reached down and touched the child, but the child brushed the butterfly away and walked away unknowingly. So he's asking for all these prove, prove me. Thunder, stars, babies being born, metal arc singing, a butterfly is, I teach people that like a butterfly is like a wink of God. Like you'll be driving, there's a butterfly and it'll coincide with your thought, like picking up a dime or a feather. Start connecting with what's out there. Mm. And it brings you right home. It's that simple. And people are trying to make it so hard. It's simple as a butterfly. Yeah, I, I, I am with you there. And we're going to take that break real no. quick. But thank you. Thank you for that, Dr. Linda. That, that's a great. I paraphrased answer. it. But yeah, you're welcome. And I, and I want I want to I want to uh, um, uh, respond to that when we come back, because there's there's something I, I want to share with you as well. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires right here on the Inspired Choices Network. And we're today we're discussing spiritual wellness in today's world with Dr. Linda Salvin. We'll be right back. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. 
Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We're back. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires. And today we're discussing spiritual wellness in today's world with Dr. Linda Salvin. So, so Dr. Linda, before we went to the break, you were explaining that the idea of the simplicity of God, the, 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 you know, you don't have to do cartwheels, you don't have to do b- deep knee bends, jump over mountains and things like that to, to discover and, and find God. And I was, I was explaining this story or sharing a story with my pastor uh, about, I don't know, less than a week ago. And um, because I, I wrestle, you know, you know, I'm in the clergy and all that sort of stuff, but I wrestle with stuff, still wrestle. And, and I'm going to be wrestling forever because, because I, that's just the way it is. Cause, cause it's the struggle, right? I mean, we're going to continue to grapple and try to try to define, but one thing I shared with him was a story of when I first began singing and uh, I, and I do not think it was by accident or coincidence. The very first song that I was given to sing was uh, entitled uh, a simple song from Leonard Bernstein's mass. And I'll just, I just want to recite just a little bit of the beginning of it. And it, it starts off saying, sing God, a simple song, loud, a loud, a, Make it up as you go along, loud I, loud A. Sing like you like to sing. God loves all simple things, for God is the simplest of all. And I, and I, I was sharing this with him because in the midst of all the dogma and all the stuff, there's plenty of stuff and everybody's got this stuff, that stuff. But God, I truly do believe, is the simplest of all. And so when you were saying that, and you were talking about the butterfly, and you were talking about, you know, the wind and the trees and the, you know, the sky, (laughs) all these things that we just blow by, man. It's like, where are you going? I'm looking for God. It's like, well, how far are you going to look, you know? Um, So, so anyway, I just wanted to share that back with you because that well, Leonard is- Bernstein was brilliant. Even his song, which everybody sang Hallelujah, was all about God. I mean, the whole thing, he was way ahead of his time. Oh, yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, I really didn't get into him until after he was gone. I really started studying his work. Amazing. And, yeah. Amazing work. Yeah. Um, but he, was, he, he always touched the soul. He had all his pain and heartache out in the open. He wore his heart on his sleeve. He had that raspy voice. He couldn't really sing. You know, but it yeah, didn't no. matter. He delivered the he delivered a message, and people loved him for that. And 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 when you're in the ministry, and and I'm a minister, and I've married people, and I and um, I've done biracial weddings, I've done interfaith weddings, I've done um, uh, um, homosexual wedding, yeah. same yeah, yeah. sex, whatever. I don't care if you love somebody; it doesn't matter. The beauty, there is change in the world, because I brought up Martin Luther King when we were kids. For example, what happened back in the 60s. -hmm. Some of the change is we don't have the segregation that was before us. We don't have, it's okay to be in a mixed marriage today. It's okay to be more accepting of your personal sexual orientation. But then you still have, quote, the religious people who say it's wrong. So I've learned and what I teach people is that there's my will and God's will. And I learned my will was to take me into the public health world and do all this stuff, but God had a different path for me. 
Mm. So was it up to God or me? Is it odd or is it God? And as I'm saying this, you can't hear it, but a plane's flying over. And every time I talk about the plane crash, there's always a plane reminding me, ha ha, I'm here, right? Mm -hmm. So is it odd or is it God? Am I bigger than God? No, but did God put, like you and me, we know the same person as to how I got booked on the show. Somehow all our lives merged at some point for connection. So I've learned to look at life as a big chessboard or checkerboard, but God's moving all the pieces. We're just the pawns. And then our pain, or we get that get feeling of like, this is too dark, or this isn't right, or this is going to hurt, or I'm going to take the risk anyway. And then you end up getting hurt, abused, betrayed, ripped off, embezzled. It'll happen if you already know going in, that might not be right, but the end result will be there. You'll survive it most of the time. But if you let go, let God, well, what do you want me to do today? And it takes you into this whole other world. I never dreamed of being on radio. I was chosen out of 360 psychics for LA radio when they created the radio psychic. I was that person. Mm -hmm. I broke ground with the FCC and all that because back then they didn't want a psychic on the air. We went through, that was KBIG 104 FM. And the guy who gave me my start, Fred Misman, I talked about him all the time, just saw him last week. He's still my biggest cheerleader. It's a hard it's, it's hard to prove the psychic stuff because so many people say, well, my priest said I can't talk to you. You're the work of the devil. I'm like, then why God give me a gift? You know, yeah. there's always an answer, but it's always back to God because it's either positive or negative, wrong or right, but it's always their way versus this way. Well, we don't know what's right. If you learn to figure out God's will for you and find your butterfly, your path will open. Don't worry about everybody else. And I'm human. I'll look at the ex-boyfriends who are now grandparents. Well, I got left behind. Or what about this one that made so much money doing blah, blah. And what about me? And we all compare. But then when we find out the pain or the struggles or the health, we as people see, and it's a very material world of glitz and glam and merchandising, and especially with the internet, and you got all the different platforms everybody's promoting something everybody's selling something everybody looks gorgeous right half of it's not real we're stimulated and then you buy the new purse you buy the new car and after a while it's just a purse just a car you don't use the purse or you buy a new belt or you buy a new tie or you get a new pair of shoes right Bill, i can't wait to wear them so you wear the shoes and after three times it's like they're in your closet now what because we're always looking for stimulation my stimulation came later when i really found my source with God because I would be more excited to be spiritual than material. Mm. Okay. My family, my sister, I mean, I was practically brought up in a restaurant because my parents worked all the time. By the time they got home, we'd always go out to eat. And the joke was we were, you know, I was brought up in a restaurant. I'm at a point. Yeah. I love dining. I love my cuisine, but I'm also okay now, especially through the lockdown cooking and feeding myself again. I don't have to be out there. Right. Right. The shift, it's the shift. Our priorities change when you become spiritually grounded. The other passions, desires, lusts, whatever you want to call it, change. Because the contentment, that hole inside gets filled up. Because we're always searching. That's why there's drug addiction, alcoholism, food addiction, sex addiction, shopping addiction, gambling. It's that spin of, wow, we get that moment and then you crash. Spiritual, I think, as you have found, you're more balanced. You've got questions. That's cool. That's the wisdom versus mm -hmm. the knowledge. We all come up with knowledge, then we get the wisdom. But you're trying to fill the hole. And that hole fills up spiritually. Not always. I have a big, deep hole. But most of the time, I just like it earlier in the, in, in the conversation, it's learning how to go back in, watch out there, and I feel okay to deal with the next challenge or next problem or the flat tire or the car accident or whatever problem is in my way right the computer didn't work oh i have to call my tech he had to come last night he had to come today but i'm here the show went on right even though i didn't want to, have to go through all the tech stuff i hate tech stuff but i did it i'm here we're talking it worked out you know, things happened just before I went on the air that had me shocked, and I'll deal with that later, but I'm here. You're here. And I just, uh, 
my publicist had me do an article on mindfulness, which is being published soon. And it's really about being in the moment, staying here. You're not supposed to really date stamp a show, but it is a, it, 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 it's a Friday. We're recording this on a Friday. I'm not going to date stamp. But all that's real is today. I can be grieving what happened 50 years ago because so-and-so did this, or I'm worried about what's going to happen in three years. So we have worry and fear on both sides of the past and the, and the, and the future. But mm -hmm. in the moment, there's peace. There's peace in the moment. There's no fear, no worry, because we're here now doing this show or they are watching this show. Right. That's all that's real. That's all that's real. Everything else is speculation and white noise and monkey minds. And right. It's everything to drive you crazy. But yes. the moment is here. You can walk out your door and maybe see a grasshopper. That's your totem for the moment about moving forward or the butterfly as transformation or a crow singing or a praying mantis. I look at every little thing and then I go Google the totem. And what it means for the moment is, what was I supposed to learn today? That's spirit. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. My grandfather, he 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 said it every day of his life that I was around him. And that was, you learn something every day. Yes, you do. Um, we, we're going to take That's a- That's got chills when you said that. Yeah, yeah. It, it it gives me chills every time I say it too, just because it's like, it's, it's him being very present with me you Welcome come from a very family. wise or spiritual family you had i had it in a different way but um you were given a lot of food for thought with very simple words you're lucky you're lucky you, you don't realize some people crave that but that's also where your music comes from i, I mean i can read your past lives i can tell you everything about you because i figured you out the first time we talked on the phone but <laughs> Well, you hold on to all that. We're, we're still recording. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We'll be right back in just a second. Uh, you're listening to Bill Myers Inspires with my guest, Dr. Linda. We'll be right back. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We are back and we're discussing spiritual wellness with Dr. Linda Salvin. And so I want to know now, because you had, you gave me a heads up that you have um, some candles, like healing candles that you are, 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 are putting together. And I want to make sure that we get an opportunity to know about that and how we may get our hands on that. So explain, please explain, please explain. Okay, well, I started Candle Magic in 1999. I was trained, um, like everybody I was searching. And it all started because I was dating a guy for like five years and he wouldn't really emote. And I was getting tired of being with this and I knew it wasn't really right, but of course I had to fix it. So um, 
I, I, psychic Anu is no longer on the planet. Uh, she had a candle line. I tried. She goes, I'll oh, work this and it'll bring them closer. And it's like, yeah, nothing happened. Then I went to a store in Hollywood that's supposed to have the best candles to do magic on people. Didn't happen. So one of my clients came to buy something and she wanted me to help her kid and she sold stage to some store downtown she goes oh go call michael i said for what she goes the candles i said well, what's he gonna do you see so i called this guy up i said you have blah blah he said yeah come on down i drove 45 minutes to this apothecary a santa Maria store which all jewish girls visit and i <laughs> walk in and i see all these skulls and hair and oils and i mean it was spooky it was spooky. And I said to Mike, I just want this guy to open up a little. I want to know what's going on. So he gave me some oils and a candle and told me what to do. I called him back a week later. I said, it's working. He goes, of course it works. I said, yeah, but how? He goes, well, why don't you come back and I'll teach you. Well, this guy that I was with was talking and emoting so much. I didn't know how to shut him up. <laughs> it got to me to the other point. We stayed together another two years, but, um, I was like, oh, my God. So I went back to Michael. I said, why are you going to teach me all this? He says, one, you'll learn because you're on the radio. Remember, I was nationally syndicated in over 400 markets back then. Mm -hmm. So I had a huge audience. And um, he said, plus, you're going to buy from me. I said, oh, OK. I had no idea. So he gave me three formulas, one for money, one for love, and one to remove bad luck. Went on the air one night. I said, okay, you guys, you're not going to believe this, but I just got into some candles with some oils and you can do blah, blah, blah. If you're just to call me off the air. I came home to 25 orders. Wow. And I went and bought more inventory. And I, all of a sudden I was in business adding to my psychic practice. One, I was the radio talk show host. Then I used that to bring in the clients. Then I was upselling the candles. Oh, well, if you really want to invest in that stock or buy the house or you're not having enough money, then you need the money and success power. So I started the line and then I went on the air and I had a, 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 a contest, what to call the line. And it became Wix of Wisdom. Fast forward, that was 1999. And in 2006, I hired, there's the word, I hired Kris Jenner before she was keeping up with the Kardashians and I paid her $25,000. She was the host of my infomercial which you can still see on YouTube. They didn't hit TV till 08. By that time, she had Keeping Up with the Kardashians, which she got a lot from my candles. And then they made candles of their own. They ripped me off. It's a long story. But it's all documented. And um, I was on TV with an infomercial back in the infomercial days from 08, 09. But then at the same time, if you remember in 09, that's when um, talk radio flipped and went to hip hop. CBS radio went off the air. I lost my job. Um, my mom died three, months, three weeks later. And by that summer, I had so much on my plate, I had to pull the show from TV. We were on six cable networks at the time in Canada and the United States was huge. Well, the candles are a mix of Santa Maria and I brought in Kabbalah. Wow. Again, it's, the, yeah, again, nobody does it. It's, I took away all the occult. It's not pagan. It's not wicked. It's not Santa Maria. It's not, it's not dark. It's not magic. It's not voodoo. Although voodoo only means healing, but we see the right. negative. Right. But I now, since 1999, I have Wicks of Wisdom. And somebody yesterday just said, let's put it back on the air and do another infomercial. I'm thinking, okay, let's launch it one more time the right way. So there's three candles per set. Everything's on the power of three, like the pyramids and God the Holy Spirit and whatever the other one is. Um, <laughs> and then there's four oils. So you think of banana bread, chocolate chip cookies, and pumpkin pie. There's three recipes. I have formulas to open doors for money, success, opportunity, to bring in the love life, to get rid of somebody, to get a divorce, to get rid of the blocks, obstacles, negativity, to heal people. I mean, I've got testimonies that go back to 1999 that are incredible. So, so how I, do we uh, get our hands? How do we Linda get our hands? LindaSalvin.com. Everything's on the website. LindaSalvin.com. Wix of Wisdom. Of Wisdom. It's part of LindaSalvin.com. There's also WixofWisdom.net because uh, I used to be separate, but then I branded me, Lin Dr. Right, Linda. Right. So okay. if people want to change their luck, remove the blocks and obstacles to enhance intimacy. I don't promise the love, but if it's meant to be at the end of the booklet, it says in accordance with God's will. Because there it is. 
There it's it is. Still, you can burn 20,000 candles and it may not work or you may do one. Thank you for oh spending your afternoon right here with us at Bill Myers Inspires. Remember, we're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Inspired Choices Network. Remember to take time this week to take a breath and look within yourself and figure out how you can make a positive difference in this world. Spread the word, and we'll see you here next Friday. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for spending your afternoon right here with us at Bill Myers Inspires. Remember, we're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Inspired Choices Network. Remember to take time this week to take a breath and look within yourself and figure out how you can make a positive difference in this world. Spread the word, and we'll see you here next Friday. Have a wonderful week.